Well, as you see there, Etiquini is still trying to assess the damage caused by the floods, which left more than 300 people dead. It's probably the greatest disaster and loss of life by a single climate event. Professor Kutsia joins me now. He believes that we need to understand why disasters take place. He is uh, a senior lecturer at the African Center of Disaster Studies at Northwest University. Uh, Professor Christo, good evening to you and thank you so much for uh, your time. Look, when one looks at the trend of disaster management in KZN, it hasn't been good. And I think we've got the track record to prove that to us. The scale of this, of course, has been largely unprecedented and it has caught officials really unprepared. And, you know, there's been lots of things said about how prepared government could have been for this moment. Uh, do you think that there are things that, if absolutely done differently, uh, we would not be failing the, facing uh, the scale of disaster that we are right now. Uh, afternoon um, to everybody. Yes, um, I definitely think there's, there's things that could have been done differently, um, and especially before disasters happen. Um, our legislation is very clear that we have to be proactive in our disaster management. So we have to do proactive risk assessment, also do contingency planning and um, simulation exercises of disasters. Um, so when we're, when we're in positions where there's not actual disaster, we can see what we do well and what we don't do well. If we listen to some of the problems in terms of water supply, um, we can see if we had planned this earlier and we could have seen what kind of tensions would emerge um, within communities, we could have obviously planned better for this. So there's definitely things we, we, we could have done better. One of the concerning things right now is... Um, the, the planning to try and have coordinated efforts to respond to this disaster. And, and from the outside looking in, one really sees the extent to which different departments operate in, in silos. And when a disaster like this strikes, it, it's almost like there's now the opportunity to try and bring everybody together. But it's too late trying to bring everybody together when we're in the middle of the crisis. Yeah, so that's a chronic problem within disaster management in South Africa. So uh, in pre-disaster situations, um, definitely f um, different um, departments work in, the, in silos. And they often take the, the, the view that disaster management isn't their responsibility because there's a specific department within government to do that function. But obviously, if we see the damage to, to, to water infrastructure and the need to provide water now in the disaster response, there's obviously a need for the Department of Water and Sanitation to be more involved. If we're talking about getting food supplies to people, that was also raised just mm -hmm. now. Um, there's obviously a need to, in, uh, to get um, local farmers involved, um, to get the public or the private sector involved as well, to handle distribution um, situations like that on behalf of government, to get food to people that might need it. So there's definitely a need for, for government to come together with other, other line departments, but also the private sector NGOs to improve um, disaster response and disaster planning within KZN. Ultimately, the focus now is to really give as much support and relief to uh, those that need it and, and to almost help us move beyond uh, the moment that we're in. And there's no clear indication of how long we'll be in this moment right now. What do you think government should be prioritizing? So in terms of prioritization, I think you have to first look at, at the people that can't help themselves. So we look at the elderly, we look at children, um, we, we look at the disabled, we look at places to get them to safety. Because in, in, in disasters like this, like uh, flooding, they're the ones that are least capable of, of getting to higher ground. So in terms of saving lives, I feel that's, that's something that has to be prioritized. And then obviously the... Situa situation with water, food, and, and sanitation are, are ones that have to be solved immediately because if, if those aren't solved, mm -hmm. it will lead to, to secondary impacts. So we would get, get things like um, biological disease outbreaks uh, like cholera, but we can also see people already getting upset. So we will see um, kind of tensions rise and you'll, you'll see things like looting and civil unrest also start. So it's definitely important to, to solve those things first. 
Again, when we look at where we are right now, this seems to be the short reprieve before we get to the weekend where, of course, it's been forecast of more rain expected with the ground being as waterclogged as it is. Um, it's, it, it's effectively going to be worse than it should be under normal circumstances. So what can be done in this moment to ensure that the people who, let's say, have lost houses, um, have lost families, are not in a worse off position, uh, Professor Christo, by the time we get to Monday? Yeah. Um, so this is obviously where the current response efforts and where, where people are being evacuated to and out is, is very important. Um, and people should be, be, be kept in areas where, where they're safe and obviously on higher ground um, so that they can ride out this weekend's storms in, in a place of safety where they also provided for, for their basic needs, uh, such as the food, sanitation and, and water. So that's obviously... Um, the thing that we, we need to focus on because it's going to rain and, and, and that's, mm -hmm. uh, I think, the, the least we can do at this stage um, uh, to, to ensure that no other lives are lost. And like I said, prioritize uh, the most mm -hmm. frail in, in, in the community. All right. Uh, Professor Crystal Kutsia is a senior lecturer at the African Center of Disaster Studies in the Northwest Province. Of course, the biggest challenge now is that much of what we're talking about relates to the physical impact, so the destruction of infrastructure. They saw the emotional aspect of what has happened and the trauma that people have suffered that will also need to be looked at.